Um, today, the title is Time Series Analysis. Uh, so I will use this time to talk about the recent analysis I'm working on, the real world TV system degradation study, and also use this time to talk about the uh, data pipeline. Um, it's not really time series analysis in the way that defining it for the statisticians. But we are studying time series data from um, PV power plants all, all over the world. Um, so the, a little bit of background of this study um, is that we have developed a, a Sunfire network uh, where we collecting uh, time series data including uh, power data, irradiance data, and uh, uh, weather conditions data from more than 1,000 power plants uh, on the west coast, the east coast of the US, uh, in Europe, and also in uh, India and uh, Taiwan. So uh, we really want to develop some uh, packages or a series of functions that can be applied to a lot of power plant data. Uh, and currently, the uh, SDL Sun Farm data covers 3.4 gigaw gigawatts of PV installation that encompasses about almost 2% of the global uh, PV power plants. And by studying this uh, large population, we are able to statistically uh, identify statistically uh, significant factors uh, which control or attribute to the degradation and lifetime performance of real world uh, PV, PV systems. And here I want to show two examples uh, which have 15 years of uh, time series data streams. So um, this pro project, we are collecting data from multiple uh, collaborators. So the first step is uh, to de-identify and uh, de-identify some sensitive uh, information such as the original uh, power plant's name. So we uh, add salt to the original name and script that into a harsh and uh, also uh, randomly choose seven characters string name for uh, to represent the, the power plant. So that's why you, you have seen that these power plants have this kind of weird seven digit name. Um, and the data analytic procedure for outdoor uh, or real world data, the first most important thing is that we need to do data cleaning and the data validation because uh, in the real world operation conditions, a lot of things happen. Uh, the irradiance sensor can randomly go off and uh, the, uh, the whole system may disconnect it from the grid so that there's no uh, power data collected during that time. So the first step is to uh, a coarse data cleaning that will clean up, eliminate the negative uh, numbers and zero numbers of power readings. Uh, in that way, we will also eliminate the nighttime, uh, nighttime data or observations because that's not very important for us for the, the analysis. And that will also eliminate obvious uh, inverter reading errors. And uh, uh, in order to validate the data or um, align the date, uh, weather and power data together, we use cross uh, the CCF uh, function to check the data alignment. If needed, we need to slew the data, uh, the, the timestamp of the weather data and power data to make them and the next step is uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, on the right 
reference that site is a, an example of uh, EDA, which is building a Paris Club. So on the uh, bottom left corner are the Paris Club, the scatter plot of uh, two variables versus each other. For example, on this one, uh, the x axis is uh, AC power and the y axis global horizontal ingredients. From the EDA, we can see a uh, further issue with the data. For example, uh, not on this one, but on some uh, scatter plots, we can see the AC power kind of cut off at some point when the ingredients do uh, increasing. That's probably because the, the inverter have a clipping issue. Um, and also we can identify temporal uh, degradation such as soiling and snow power issue uh, by looking at the trend of AC power versus irradiance. For example, this one, uh, this data point shows a, um, at the same irradiance level, this data point shows a lower uh, AC power uh, than majority of the data, that's uh, potentially a temporary degradation issue. So by EDA, we are able to force the cleaning the data. And after the data cleaning, uh, we come to the, um, to the data, uh, degradation calculation part. So the uh, calculation method we use is called a month by month degradation uh, model. First, we use trying to use all the clean data, not filtering it to a, a short, a, a small irradiance window or a small uh, power window. We try to use from noon time, morning and afternoon data and uh, characterize the data by age. So every 30 days from the first operational day is considered to be a month. And split the data into each month and then further split that to training and testing data sets. Use 90% of the uh, data as the training set uh, to train a regression model um, using the power as the uh, response Irradiance, temperature, and other uh, environmental uh, factors as a, a predictor. And uh, after develop this linear regression models, we can use these models to predict uh, the performance of this system in a certain uh, in a certain amount. And the underlying assumption is that there's no obvious degradation uh, within 30 days so that we can train the regression model with the random selected 90% of the data in each month. Um, after we get the predicted value of each month, uh, then we can do another either regression, a uh, linear regression model or uh, we can fit the fit the model depending on the profile of the uh, predicted value and determine the degradation rate. And we iterate this procedure for 10 times to estimate the uncertainty of the uh, degradation calculation. Um, this is an example of uh, this particular power plant, uh, which we have uh, 15 years of data um, on this figure, each point here is a predicted value from the monthly regression model, and uh, the predicted error is plotted at the, the error bar here. And after that, uh, we can try to fit a linear regression model on all the data points here, and then get a degradation rate of 0.67% per year, or uh, we can 
kind of observed that in the first about five years, there's not much degradation going on, but after that, the trend of the, uh, the, the trend of the data uh, definitely is, is declining. So we can also use a chain point uh, regression model to fit the data and get a chain point at 53rd month. And after that, the degradation rate is actually 1.2% per year, which is higher than what we determined using just single linear model. It's not very clear using that example, but in this example, we can see the profile of the uh, monthly predicted value is definitely not, cannot be uh, well explained using a simple linear model. Um, so we try to fit that with a one chain point uh, linear fitting and then get a about 5% per year in the first uh, 18 months. And after that, the degradation rate is even higher. It gets to 7% uh, per year. We can even fit this figure or the profile with multiple change points and get a very good uh, adjusted R square value. It's actually uh, about 0.99. Then we can see that uh, at different stage of the lifetime, uh, the degradation rate goes, the degradation rate goes up and even got to negative at some point. This uh, there might be some issue with the um, inverter. Uh, it may change the inverter, or they may uh, change the the PV modules. And the performance of the whole system just getting better in this particular year. So we want to apply this to a multiple power plants. Um, that's what I'm working on is the, the uh, data pipelining. So I want to show you the scripts of applying this method on uh, multiple power plants. So we already ingested all the power plant data into energy cradle into which phase. Um, so uh, we can we can grab the data from HDFS um, and apply multiple functions to it. The script of submitting this uh, slurm job uh, is really simple. This is an example of the slurm job. Uh, it's basically just call our uh, required 12 cores, uh, required 12 hours uh, maximum, and uh, the uh, memory required is 8 gigabytes. And basically just run one uh, R script. And let's look at this R script. So in this R script, it's basically wrap up everything uh, in a for loop. Uh, it first set up the working directory and uh, um, read in a list of the power plants that's currently ingested into uh, energy crypto. And then source the, the main function uh, of data pipelining. Just do a for loop from the first to the 100 power plants. Um, uh, run the, the main function and uh, print the result. Also save the result in a CSV file. The main function is more complicated, but it's still it's not very long. It's basically sourcing all the functions. Including data cleaning, um, detect the inverter saturation, and uh, feed the model, and uh, split the 
it's made the data set into training and test set and uh, feed the predictive model. So the main function will read a, a power plant name and uh, DOA here is basically the uh, environmental condition you want to predict for all the power plants. And uh, from HTFS, we read the data from HTFS. then reassemble and rename the data the, the data file so basically uh, the original data header will have the power plant name uh, the project name and the attribute we want to trim it down to just the attribute because I already know the power plant's name and then do some uh, coarse cleaning that has, like I said, is just eliminate the negative and the zero values from the data uh, from the data frame. And also split the data into each month, uh, add another column called age to the data frame. Um, and then plot a Paris plot. This is just for uh, later, later on after we get the result, we can go back to the, the Paris plot to see if the data cleaning function actually works very well, eliminate, eliminate all the uh, obvious errors or there are still some error in the data. Uh, and then we need to probably manually uh, eliminate those data. And after that, uh, check the saturation. Uh, so this function basically checking when the uh, power plant, at what power uh, state the, the power plant, uh, the inverter saturate. Uh, if the inverter doesn't saturate at all, then we just use the original data set. If it saturates at a certain point, then we eliminate the data, uh, the AC power data higher than the limit. Um, and here if we iterate the uh, modeling, the predictive model feeding for 10 times uh, to estimate the uncertainty of the deviation And then plot the result. Here uh, we got we got ten values from the ten derivation values from the iteration ten times iteration, and we just take the mean of that and also calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation will be the uncertainty of that estimation and return that to the main function. So by using H HPC, the high performance computing cluster, originally the whole process will take about uh, 30 minutes for each uh, power plant, for each inverter. Uh, after I uh, run this on HPC, it will take uh, about uh, it can calculate eight power plants in 30 minutes on average. So it's about eight, eight times faster than a single computer. Um, that's what I have for today. Do you have any questions on data mining or I didn't show all the details of each function. If you're interested in any one of them, you can show me in the detail. Any questions? Are you going to post them online? Uh, so this.
these codes are currently on in the uh, in the sixteen MLE program repo. I I don't think I'll post all. 